Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 10 of Sonic Comic Chaos. That's right, we have already hit double-digit episodes. Ian, did you ever think we'd get here? No, honestly, I thought you'd abandon me by this point. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, as you heard, I am joined by my co-host, Ian Waffles. Ian, say hi. Hi, what's going on? Ian, who are you? Uh, my name is Ian Waffles. I have a YouTube channel by the same name where I make videos, allegedly. And uh, <laughs> recently I've been making a few about Kingdom Hearts 2, so if any of that interests you, you can check it out. But otherwise, I'm usually here, hanging out. Or I'm on uh, Ocean's channel, uh, which is like Ocean and then IZ at the end, uh, where we're, we talk about My Hero Academia. And there'll be a new episode released probably next month. So if you if you like My Hero Academia content and you like me, then hey, that's a place where you might find something to enjoy. Ooh, I'm very behind in My Hero Academia, but yay. Anyway, um, <laughs> we are today we are talking about the story arc Spark of Life from Sonic Universe, which is issue 71 through 74 for those of you reading a lot at home. But before we get into any of that, we must once again do our world famous segment, Ian and Ace read your comments. Um, so we have... Um, I already saw. Uh, sorry, I should have. I really probably should have saved the person asking if we've read Imposter Syndrome for this because that's next episode. Oops. Anyway. <laughs> oh. Well. Um. In a reference to um our uh, our recurring gag from um not recurring our gag from uh what was it episode was it Control or was it um the Knuckles versus Shadow one where we did our uh our totally legitimate true thing that happened where we got the Sonic Frontier script leaked to us. Uh, it was definitely one of those. <laughs> um, but, uh, oh, I think it was Control, because the comment above is talking about Thunderbolt. So unless on um, Total Eclipse they were talking about Thunderbolt for some reason. Uh, anyway, uh, Surreal Spitemis, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, um, is uh, talking about how um, basically Silver, uh, our gag from, or I mean, I told the legitimate thing that is going to happen in Frontier is about Silver being decapitated and uh, following Sonic around for the game. Um, they were very careful to edit that out of the trailers, but it's it's going to be there. Um, <clears throat> talking about how um, Silver uh, can't be stopped by decapitation. And Ian, have you ever seen the the cartoon Gargoyles? No, but I know I know what it's about. So this commenter implied that silver would be voiced by the leader of gargoyles um <laughs> and he said i'm gonna i don't know what the leader of gargoyles voice sounds like so i'm gonna i'm gonna approximate what i think it will sound like it's no use he says as he has bed butts the heart of the main villain's chest a shadow with a single tear wait fuck this joke <laughs> is, this joke is dead anyway the, the, the just idea like, was... just like silver Ah. <laughs> yeah. uh. It all comes should, around. Should we take this again? Nah, fuck it. We'll do it live. Basically, the idea was that Silver would kill the main villain as a head without... when Shadow would, would applaud with a single tear in his eye. Okay. This is terrible. I mean, we, we all have our days. <laughs> this is the and worst. this was not yours, but you know. <laughs> it was not. Um, Alrighty. What are we then, talking about today? No, oh, wait, we have, have one more comment, Ian. Oh, great. I'm driving this ship. <laughs> They uh, we have King Galactics talking about how they weren't uh, particularly fond of the uh, the bit about uh, Sonic losing control as the Werehog. Um, that how basically the whole point of Sonic's Werehog form is that it's meant to be controlled because of his connection to Chaos Energy, and um, yeah, how basically it'd, be, it'd make more sense for him to go rabid if something were to happen while he was in that form rather than that's just being the default of him being in that form. Um, Ian, thoughts? Yeah, I agree. I think that whole arc is pretty mishandled, so kind of adding more nuance to it is kind of what it needed, because otherwise it's just like, he uses the form and he's a monster, and then it's like, yeah, and the solution is, get over it. And he's like, you're right. <clears throat> it's like, he doesn't have to actually, like, change or learn or, like, really accept anything, because it's... It's the epitome of, like, if someone was just like, you have a new arm. And he's like, oh, but I'm scared of my new arm. And it's like, yeah, but it's on you, so, like, get over it. And he's like, you're right. Like, it doesn't, like, it doesn't say anything about Sonic. That he third has arm's rights. Um, huh? I said third yes. arm's rights. But um, in the last comment, this isn't from an episode of this show. It's from um, 
you guys may have seen I uh, I cut out an excerpt of a discussion we had about Sonic Prime and uploaded it as its own video. And I'm not I, I'm not going to read any of the other comments from that. But one was from Judy Graw, who says, OK, so it's is this in a different language? Maybe it's promosum spelled P-R-O-M-O-S-M. But it's like crossed out with like the little effect they let you do where you cross letters out. And then the next thing is an emoji with like a smiley face. Sounds like a a virus. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, maybe. Anyway, <clears throat> Judy, I bet you didn't know your comment was going to be around here, but here it is. Anyway, so hopping into this arc. <laughs> what am I doing with my life? Anyway, um. <laughs> Hopping into this arc, hopping into issue 71, Spark of Life, uh, part one. Uh, essentially, the Freedom Fighters are... Uh, oh, oh, okay, so we get an explanation. With Sonic the Hedgehog, Game Heroes, Antoine, and Bunny on a mission elsewhere. Where are they? What are they doing? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, more, like, more importantly, why didn't he bring Tails with him? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know where they are. Um, but so basically they're gone elsewhere and uh Sally, uh big tails and uh, uh Nicole are uh, left alone or in rotors on Sky Patrol, but he won't be in the rest of the book. Is he? He is. Um They're like, oh the sunset and suddenly gar- dark guy street creatures start attacking Sky Patrol. We gotta we gotta do some stuff. And so they get out and they fight. Not much more to say about that. They win, they go inside when the sun sets or sun rises. Um, I wrote one, one note I had was, um, so Nicole is like, we have two minutes until sunrise and then there's like five panels and then the sun rises. Um, Indeed. and then even tails goes, that felt like a long two minutes. It's like, it really didn't like <laughs> <laughs> what I, I, I will say what I like about that scene is I really like, um, uh, I really like the part where it's like they they kind of sit there and then they see like the sun come up um and they kind of like there's just like kind of a quiet panel of that and it kind of is cool because it ties back into the kind of character of nicole and like the little story where they went to the cave is like they're kind of trying to protect the planet because the planet is like beautiful and good and they even asked i think uh, nicole even asked that too where it's like you know you didn't have to kill that one dark gaia monster it's like yeah but i just wanted to do you know the best i could to make sure it it would all work out um and so I just I kind of like that little moment of them like watching the sunrise um, where it's just like, this is kind of what we're fighting to protect. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, but so uh, my next note is this coffee bit is fun because um, Cream goes to make coffee for uh, for Rotor. And uh, the joke is that Rotor's a genius and he makes complicated shit. So his coffee machine is complicated. My question, though is wouldn't the idea of like innovating and like making more advanced stuff be to make it simpler for people to use? Um, like, well, I get, I guess unless like the idea is that he's one of those geniuses who kind of doesn't have that finesse aspect. It's like, here's all these options through these who look through like these many gadgets I can create instead of like one streamlined gadget. Yeah, I guess I, I don't know. Like, ideally, when you just like push a button and coffee would just come out. Like, I don't know. Well, maybe there's a lot of different. You maybe you can get a croissant part in there too. <laughs> what? Maybe it makes croissants. You get a croissant in your coffee? Yeah, like spits it out, and you have to put in a code. <laughs> what? Um. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. But so, um, then that's a fun bit. She she fucks it up. Road rest you help her. Um. We Sally has a joke where she goes, "Guess cream and coffee don't mix," which I think is a funny joke. Um, but the book, yeah. the book makes fun of her for it. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> no, I like it too. And so Nicole's talking to her, and um, they have the bit you were talking about where she's like, "Why did you dive to to save Tails?" Um, and she's like, "Cause I did." And then uh, Nicole is like, "Ah, no," and disappears. And she says, <laughs> "And my next note is." How do you pronounce this fucker's name? <laughs> is it... uh, I think it's Elodie. Like I, it L-E-D. Have to, I think it would have to be. Because like the only other one is Eli-D. And that sounds fucking stupid. Well, the reason it would probably be LED is because it's like LED lights. <sighs> See, that one's bad. 
I don't like that one, but well, um, I think that I don't know. Maybe I'm stupid, but I feel like that's the I feel like that's what it would be. Um, but so uh, we find out. So they're like, I guess we got to go see Doctor Elodie, uh, who we find out is like an old friend of the Kingdom of Acorn. Uh, meanwhile, Nicole is in uh, the digital world, which is like literally it's like it's not like inside of a computer. It's like an alternate dimension that's like connected to computers. Um, which is fun. I think it, I think it's meant to be like Game Land from uh, Sonic Colors, right? Is what this is meant to be. Um. Oh yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. yeah which I, I will say. That. Yeah, I never thought of that. Yeah. Well, I will say I really do enjoy the way Reboot has been tying the games in with the comic. Yeah. No, it, that's probably my favorite part is how it kind of ties in all that lore. Um. Yeah. Well, and what's what's interesting is that like with this, like they're they're trying to like weave it in whereas like with idw it's like yeah it's just here yeah exactly like it doesn't feel like it's tying in with its original content as well as you know just being there yeah but so um and then uh we see this uh we see dr elodie in the digital world um and uh we get kind of a uh, the original explanation of um basically he's nicole's creator and my next note was that um Oh, so we're not having Nicole's origins be a weird time loop? Dang. <laughs> um, audience, for those of you who don't know, uh, and Ian could probably explain it better than I could. Um, fun fact, this is actually the first Sonic comic I ever... Uh, I don't know if it's the first one I ever read, but it's the first one I ever bought. So we find out Nicole's origins is that she falls from the sky as like a ball, and then she turns into like a little handheld computer that Sally uses. And then we find out that what it was was that years later, Sally will send that same Nicole back in time to help her past self. Of course, begging the question, where did Nicole come from in the first place? Yes. But you know, <laughs> did they ever retcon that? Did they ever go like, actually, it was this other thing? Um, They don't directly retcon it, but like literally in that story, they say like, um, it's like, is this an alternate future? Because at the very end, they return back to the future. And yeah, it's like, is this an alternate future we're seeing? And I think Flynn was just like, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, and what? And doesn't that future literally get destroyed? No, that's a different one. Oh, oh, my, it's, it's another different one? Yeah. So we have like three different futures? Four yeah. if you count Dark Mobius? Five yeah. if you count pre-Sonic going back in time and post-Sonic going back in time? Yes. <laughs> anyway so uh we see he um he made nicole and he's giving it to sally and we find out that uh there's more to it than just him giving her a present um and uh he he goes to say a, a name for it and he stops he goes knit and then he's like no and so uh king nigel's like how about nicole um and so it's it's named nicole and um it's a nice scene like this whole arc and um it's not this this arc is not great it's nothing spectacular and it's definitely not as fun as the champions arc we talked about last episode but it is good it's like it's got a lot of interesting stuff um and i think sorry go on i was gonna say i think the best scenes are the one with sally in the past i agree i think the the nicole... any of those are very good at endearing her yeah i think the nicole backstory stuff is probably the best parts of it um yes, i agree and then, uh, so her and LD are fighting through the digital realm. Um, we cut back with the the other freedom fighters, and they go to LD's house. We find out he's reprogrammed a bunch of bad nicks to help him out. And um, he goes, and they uh, he wakes up from the digitizer, uh, which I think is interesting. We'll find out a little more later. He was working on the digitizer at the same time Chuck was working on the roboticizer. Um, yes, and how basically they had the both of them had two different means of um. Because we find out the roboticizer, obviously, in the old continuity, was made as a means to like help people, like fix their uh, ailments and make them live longer. And I like the idea, and it's never expressly said here, that you had the two of them basically have two different ideas for how to accomplish that. One of which being to fix the physical body through machinery, and the other one being to abandon the physical body. Um, which is cool. Um, yeah, no, I, I agree. Like, um, again, I really like how Flynn integrates the shows and in the in the comics. But so, um, 
we, uh, they he, they wake him up. Nicole comes out of there, and uh, we see Elodie is a uh, he's a little with withdrawn around Nicole for a uh, for some reason for some yeah. very predictable reason. Yeah, it's very weird how every time he's in the background, he's just flipping their, her the bird. <laughs> I didn't understand it at the time, but he's got very nuanced reasons. Uh, that'd be funny. Uh, but so he's like, how is the water not falling in? And we get a call back to um, the the chase. Well, not the chase, but the issue that was in right before the chase where um, uh, where he uh, where they where they're like, how is the water not falling in? And Sonic goes, it's magic. And Sally goes like, yeah, that's pretty much the best explanation. Yeah, but I like that uh, Nicole's like, I don't like that answer. <laughs> yeah, I do like that. Um, but so then um, they're talking and uh, we get uh, Sally and Nicole and Nicole's like, uh, oh, he, he doesn't he doesn't seem to like me very much. And so I was like, just just give him a bit. It's, it's fine. Um, and then we see our antagonist for um, for this arc named Phage. Her name's Phage, right? Yeah, that's how okay. I'd say it. Okay. Well, no, it wasn't a pronunciation thing. I just forgot. <laughs> um, but so, uh, getting into uh, issue uh, seventy-two, Spark of Life Part Two of Two, uh, we are we see a red star ring, which is um, so it's weird. So, Ian, maybe you can clarify this for me. In Sat AM, I think Sonic specifically says Uncle Chuck created the power rings. Yes. But they come from lakes of rings, which are naturally occurring. Well, in the lake of rings, there's like a little generator at the bottom of it. There's a power stone, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so there's, like a, there's like a machine to it, I guess. Okay. So, but is it different from like the cartoon to the comics? Yeah. Um. So in the comic, Nate Morgan and... Uh, oh, I forgot about Nate Morgan. <laughs> yeah, Nate Morgan and Uncle Chuck make it. Um, and they're, and they drop like this, he drops like this device into the, the lake, but you can still make magic rings because you can find them in special zones, like from the games. Yeah. Um, cause those also exist in the comic. Um, so they're like, they're like a magical naturally occurring entity. It's just that Nate and, uh, uncle Chuck helped to like make a device to make, to make them. And then, uh, Nate Morgan got nuked, but you know. We uh, sure did. And we used the radioactive slag from his ashes to make a new lake, <laughs> which is canon. It's canon. Um, but so he reveals the Red Star Ring, which um, we find out that uh, basically the lake of rings around his house went dormant and then it poofed out one of these. Um, so he's like, yeah, this is, this is pretty fucking epic. Like it's, it's it's like a power ring, but like way, way more powerful. Like way cooler. Yeah. I, I don't. This is a real nitpick. I don't really like the way it's colored. It looks more bronze than red. Mm-hmm. That again, very minor nitpick. But um, so they're talking about they they explain to him about like yeah we use um we use rings to let Nicole have a physical body. It's it's awesome. It, again, is it? They don't explain, and it's really frustrating how Nicole's physical body even works. Because I guess I can skip ahead to this now. We get an off panel during this story of Sonic being like Nicole. Now that you have a body, we're gonna eat some chili dogs. Could she eat? Like. I guess so. So is she just like a person? Like it, when she has the power ring, when she manifests a physical body, is it just like no different from a Mobian body? Uh, maybe she just like eats it, and then to make Sonic feel good, she just like spits it out somewhere. <laughs> I guess I because I would I would assume it's like hard light. Um, yeah. but I don't know. Anyway, so uh, choo -choo 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 -choo. basically we get a lot more of a. Elodie being like, yeah, I'm, I'm sad, but I'm not going to tell anyone why I'm sad, but I'm really sad. Um, and so uh, they're talking. And what happens? They're like, oh, go and investigate the Lake of Rings because it's acting weird. So Sally and Big go off and we get a we get a nice moment between Big and Sally um, where. Uh, train of thought. Come back. Oh, they're talking about Nicole. And she's like, does it bother you at all that she's like a, a robot and not a person? He's like, no. Because he's big and big is great, um, and uh, yeah, that's that's really all I'll say about that scene. Um, that way, I agree. I thought that was a good scene, and I I like it as like a just cute little character moment. Yeah, and so we can see the past, and we see find out that Castle Acorn is on West Side Island, um, which is interesting. Do we ever really like we know like we get a map of the world, 
uh, in preboot. Actually, I guess does West Side Island even exist in preboot? Now that I think about it, do what? West Side Island is that a thing in preboot? Uh, I'm sure it's somewhere. I'm sure like some m- mention of it is there, but uh, they don't live there. I don't think. Yeah, no. But um, yeah, we find out Kessel Acorn's on West Island, and uh, they're doing the um. So Sa- where it's a flashback, and Sally is in a um, uh. Mm-hmm tutoring session or whatever you would call this with um what's her name the the nanny lady uh rosie rosie i wanted to say rosie but i was like is rosie a different person that's rosie where they essentially do the um you're not going to carry around a calculator for the rest of your life thing but like it actually makes sense here whereas all the teachers who said that are wrong and dumb um (laughs) uh so Basically, she's like, uh, well, I don't need to study because Nicole knows everything. And she's like, yeah, but you need to learn to like, think for yourself. Uh, and it's a fun moment, and but it's uh, and it also highlights the kind of the uh, the robot racism that we'll see um, throughout this, where she goes like, yeah, and where uh, Sally's like, well, maybe Nicole could be my real advisor. And Rosie goes, oh, silly girl. She's not a person. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, she's less than a person. She's worthless and stupid. <laughs> like, well, Rosie... <laughs> Is Rosie, like, she's pretty old here. Is she dead, like, in the current continuity? Like, obviously, current, current continuity. But I mean, the continuity we're reading, like. Uh, no, I think she's still around. I would, okay. I, would I would think so. Well, I guess it's only, like, what, probably, like, 10 years, maybe, have passed. Like, yeah. maybe a little less since this flashback. So, she okay. could be in, like, a retirement home somewhere. Well, I'm saying, because I we haven't seen her yet. And I don't know if, I, I guess you would know better than I would if we see her after this, but. Yeah, I don't think we do. I'm not sure. Grant, we also never see her again in a sad AM even after they break time and space to to save her. So, you know. Yeah. Cuz that uh, shit's not very good, but you know. Wait, what? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Hold the phone. Ian. <laughs> are you serious right now? <laughs> it's like a 6. No, it is not, Ian. I mean, when's the last time you rewatched it? Like, literally a couple months ago with my little sister, and it was great. <laughs> it is definitely a show where Sonic and Robotnik are very, very cool. Dude, you got the fucking scene with um with Uncle Chuck where he's like, oh, I'm out of power, Sonic, you have to go on without me. And Sonic's, like, distraught, and he cries, I, and his friends I agree. are there with him. That is a good scene. Because it's a show full of good scenes. Uh, I don't know. I didn't think we needed to babysit the dinosaurs. I thought that was. A little- oh, okay. Because they have one filler episode where we babysit some dinosaurs. And it's- well, there's also the episode where we go underground and we fight like that stupid monster. And well, and the also, episode- the- and then there, and then there's also any episode where Antoine exists. Well, but the but the filler episode with the dinosaur exists because it's it's a parallel between Tails and the dinosaurs. Because Tails also lost his parents and he feels alone and he wants to help the dinosaurs out. It's it's it's. Yeah, I cannot believe like, this. Yeah, it's, it's like stupid. <laughs> it's not stupid. Who cares about baby Tails and his stupid but, problems of being Tails alone is, in the world? Tails is great. What do you mean? He has that yeah, like episode Tails. where yeah, he... he's the. I mean, he's not the Michael Jordan of Freedom Fighters that the Archie version of him is, but you know he'll do. I cannot believe this. What? I mean, I don't know. I just feel like all the characters are kind of not used ever, which is true, except for Sally. And, uh, you know, it's they're not that good in that show. (laughs) Wow. Bunny is completely wasted. Rotor is boring. And Antoine is the worst character to ever exist. Rotor isn't boring. He has that episode where he's like, Sonic, I wish I were a superhero like you. I don't want to be a dumb nerd. And then, like, he finds out that, like, being a nerd is cool because you help the team in different ways. Yeah. And? (laughs) Because you're you're wrong, Ian. You are. (laughs) (laughs) Ugh. Anyway, fucking wow. Anyway, so <laughs> you, you act like I just like uh, you just realize that God isn't real. <laughs> well, you fucking. <laughs> I don't think I've ever met a fa- a person who's like a big Archie fan who doesn't also love Sad I Am. It's it's. I used I used to love it. It's how I got into the series, and then I watched it like three times, and I'm like, yeah, this is kind of whatever. <laughs> <sighs> Man, I don't. I don't know, Ian. Just, anyway, so <laughs> what are we crisis, talking about? Crisis of faith averted. What are we talking about? Uh, oh, so we're talking stupid- about some boring thing that is de- that I do agree is worse than sad am. <laughs> okay, at least we can agree on that. So 
uh, we go back to LD's lab and tail uh, tails. Well, tails is helping uh, Nicole navigate the um the digital world, and uh, I can't remember exactly what she's doing. It's meant to be like a physical representation of like a literal firewall, I think. Yeah. But so we see our antagonist lurking in the background. Uh, Nicole doesn't uh, encounter her quite yet. Um, but so Tails is talking to uh, Elodie. And we, uh, uh, he's like, oh yeah, Nicole, I, I, she was created under, the exact words are, unique circumstances. And Nicole's like, if you could not talk about me, like I'm not here, that'd be great. <laughs> And he's like, no. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, if you weren't a stupid robot, I wouldn't have to. Yeah. And then we get a scene. I think these scenes of LD in the past are genuinely really well done of him um, working on Nicole. And uh, it's interesting. So I think w- what we're supposed to gather from this scene is Nicole talks to LD. And LD for a second. Okay. So we're going to move ahead a little bit. Uh, Nicole was designed because Elodie had a dying ass daughter and he was like, Nicole, can you like scan her brainwaves? Nicole's like, I got you, fam. And then she didn't. And then she, his daughter fucking died. Um, so indeed. Um, look, it was a very predictable twist. I saw it coming from a mile away. But regardless, um, Nicole talks to uh, Elodie and he's like, oh, are you? And I think the are you is meant to imply like, are you her? Like, are you her? Con- are you my daughter's consciousness? Um, so is this flashback are we implying this flashback is like um because i think we find out nicole learned from elodie's brainwaves consciousness essentially so maybe yeah. it's like the only reason she's even able to talk at all is because of that um so maybe i don't know it's it's i don't know it's an interesting scene it's fun and it's it's got a lot of it's interesting because like this arc we, you know we talk about how it's kind of boring and it's kind of whatever but also it's like it's 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 interesting. It's got some interesting stuff in it. Um, yeah, it's, got, it's got some good ideas. But so um, <laughs> then um, tail snaps LD out of his PTSD flashbacks, um, mm-hmm. and he's like uh yeah. But so they're uh, Nicole's like okay yeah it's uh, it's 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 cool and all, and so what's interesting is LD talks to Nicole. And he's like, do you remember, like, what happened to change you from being, like, just a stupid robot to, like, being able to have, like, thoughts and feelings? And she's like, well, I mean, I remember everything because I'm a stupid robot, but uh, I don't remember. But, like, my memories, like, the way I remember things are different, which is cool. Um, But what I have to assume. So he's like, what happened that changed you from being, like, a robot to, like, a person? The next scene we see is... um. Uh, right after the Eggman invasion of uh, Knothole, where Knothole, again, is a generic forest with some checkerboard uh, patterns, but whatever. Um, we see Sally basically pouring her heart out to Nicole of being like, I, you know, I have to be strong for everyone else, but I miss my father a lot. And, you know, I'm sorry I'm blabbing onto you because you're a stupid robot, but like, thanks for whatever. And we see like Nicole has like these three dots on her screen. I have to assume, based on how storytelling works, that this is the moment that Nicole started to diverge from just being like a machine to being like a consciousness. Yeah, I would say so. Which is cool. Like, well, that... it's, it's, it's nice because it comes from a place of like wanting to comfort her master, so to speak. Yeah. You know? And I really like it. Like, again, I think, and Ian, you and I were talking before recording about how um this arc is supposed to be the big like Sally and Nicole arc of how like they're, they're so in love, and now Ian was able to sneak it under the radar. And I don't think that really comes through. Um, no, it very much comes through as just friends. Yeah, but I um, think... And, and, like, people in a dark circumstance. Yeah, but, you know, their their relationship, their friendship, you know, being as it is, it's still done very well, and I still do like their dynamic. Yeah, I think the um, flashbacks are my favorite part of the arc. Oh, absolutely. Um, I think... I. We'll get there. I, I think there's one like romantic quote unquote part, but we'll we'll get there when we get there. Um, so where are we? Okay. Oh, so we get there. Sally and uh, Big are at the Lake of Rings, and uh, Big goes fishing, and he gets a a red star ring, and uh, he mentions Froggy. He's like, Froggy gets jealous when I don't bring him places. It's like, why didn't you just bring Froggy? Why is he not here? <laughs> like, are you and Froggy having a fight? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I mean, Sally was like, well, I did I didn't see him as the jealous type. <laughs> yeah. Froggy's back home be like fucking big going on adventures. I don't need him. Everyone everyone's always asking where's Froggy, but no one's ever asking how is Froggy. Indeed. Froggy uh. Froggy never loses big. What's the deal? <laughs> Uh, but so um, uh, my next note was just because I wanted to remember to bring this up to you specifically. Uh, it was simply, if Big is in Sonic Prime but not Silver, I'll commit a war crime. Because why the fuck is Big <laughs> in Sonic Prime but not he's... Silver? And he's going to be in Forces. You mean Frontiers? Yeah, Frontiers. At least in Frontiers, you can be like, hey, it's an open world. They have some fishing. You don't. He doesn't need to be in Prime. Like, I'm just like, look, we don't know that Silver's not in Prime. We haven't seen, we've only seen like literally three characters in Prime so far, those being Sonic, Shadow, and Big. I'm just saying, if somehow Big the fucking cat made it into Sonic Prime and Silver did not, Wild Brain, I'm, I'm coming for you. <laughs> I'm going to write a very strongly worded letter that includes the words, uh, screw and you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anyway, I'm glad I wrote that down because I did genuinely forget that. Um, so, uh, but so they get the red star ring out of the, the Laker rings, and Big is like, "Can I drive us on the way home?" And the Sally's like, "Sure." And so surely you're thinking like, "Oh, we're gonna get like some comedy out of this, right?" No, he's just like, "Can I drive?" And she's like, "Sure." And then he just does, and it's fine. Like and he just like fits perfectly. <laughs> like you'd think at the very least you would have a, the joke be that he drives fine. Like that's just like kind of a boring mundane drive. Like I don't like. I don't know. It's just like you. Fe it feels like you're setting up a joke there and just not doing anything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's just meant to be cute. <laughs> but so uh, they get back and they're like, "We have another red star ring." And uh, Sally goes into the backyard and finds uh, his daughter's corpse. Indeed, not literally. It's in a, a coffin, or maybe it's a maybe it's um, like a big urn. I can't quite tell from the art. It's just a big box. But regardless. She finds what remains of his daughter. And yeah, uh, she's, in a, she's in a corpse sized container. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's probably her corpse. But so um, that ends this issue. Moving on to issue 73, Spark of Life, uh, part three of four. Uh, we get the. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. I wrote. Th this was before I had realized that we're not really going to get any Sally and Nicole like shipping stuff from this. I wrote because um, the variant cover we see of this is the extreme BFFs variant. And my note was extreme BFF variants, AKA we swear they're not gay. <laughs> we promise. Yeah. Um, but so we, wait, we see this Ram guy. Is this a, is this a preboot guy? Um, Do you remember a Ram villain from preboot? The big Ram guy. Yeah. Um, uh, Ari. Yeah. I think that's him on this cover. Oh, that's cool. Huh? Anyway, but so we also see Eclipse. My boy, he's back. <laughs> uh, anyway, so um, we see uh, yeah, basically Sally's like, so what's the deal with uh, this 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 coffin in your uh, in your backyard? And he's like, uh, and she's like, this reminds me of Nicole. And it's like, no, it it doesn't. I mean, it, it may remind you of Nicole, but the only way in which this person looks like Nicole is that they are also a lynx. Like. She's a different color, wears glasses, and doesn't have like the discoloration that Nicole has. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't, it's it, Nicole might be being a little lynx racist. Not Nicole, Sally. Turn it. <laughs> Here goes my joke. Anyway, uh, so we get the backstory of Nicole. Like, uh, it, uh, what's his name? Elodie. Elodie. Yes, I kept. Anytime I tried to write his uh his name in a. Uh, in my notes, they kept it kept trying to autocorrect to Elliot, and it's like, no, that's a real name. I'm trying to write a fake name. I'm trying but, to write um, a stupid name. Yeah, he's like Nicole was supposed to save um, Nikki, and she didn't do it, and so I don't like her anymore. Um, and so we uh, Nicole comes face to face with our villain of the arc, and I was wrong. I thought that the twist was going to be that like the the whole uploading L, uh L, geez, god damn it the whole uploading nikki's consciousness into the computer thing like worked partially 
And so this is like the fucked up version of her brain that's inside. That's like trapped uh, inside the computer. Yeah. Yeah. You mean like an interesting idea? Yeah. That thing that you just said. No, I, I absolutely agree with you that that's what I, not what I thought it was going to be, but I thought like that would be an interesting take. And I'm like, so of course they're not going to do it. Uh <laughs> yeah. Well, I, cause phage I, is just a boring virus. Like who cares? Well, do they ever come back? Yeah, they come back and <sighs> they just do, they just hack into a system and steal something. And I'm like, who cares? But yeah, like they're not a character. They're just like a creepy little virus. And I'm like, Bro, it would have been so cool if that if exactly what you said. This was like a piece of her that still exists in the like the ether or whatever of like the digitizer, and like Nicole has to like destroy it or whatever to set her free, and and then like LED has to be like no, he's you know he'd be like that's my daughter or whatever. It's like no, it's not her anymore. And then when he makes the decision to give Nicole the red ring, he is he is literally sacrificing what's left of his daughter to give it to the person who he does not acknowledge as his daughter and in fact took his daughter to destroy his daughter who was not his daughter and it would be big and emotional it'd be good but instead it's boring and i don't care well i think phage i like their aesthetic and i think the the way they talk with the like three things that they say like whenever they say something they say like two synonyms for it um or maybe yeah, synonyms the, gimmick, is the, wrong the gimmick's word. fine the gimmick's fine it's just they don't and like, there's a moment. I don't know if it's in this issue or the next one, where um, she's like, "Well, what if I kill you and then I turn into like your visage?" Um, like, so she starts to morph into a lynx. And I thought, like, "Oh, this is the moment where we're getting the reveal." And like, nope, it's just not. It's just nothing. It's just not interesting. Um, but so um, <laughs> oh, so my next note was, uh, are they going to address the ethical issues of what LED was doing? So. <laughs> Basically, Elodie's like, it's unclear, right? So what the digitizer seems to do is take literally your brainwaves, the ones that are in your head, and put them somewhere else. And if that's what he was planning to do with his daughter, then okay, that's fine. But the impression I was seemingly getting, because Nicole is kind of this weird facsimile of his daughter, is that it was almost going to be like a copy. And so like, yeah, no, my daughter's dead, but I have like a computer version of her. Which is really fucked up. Um, <laughs> again, I don't th- the I. It seems like that's not what they were doing. It seems like it was simply just like I'm just gonna take her brain. I'm gonna put it in a computer. Um, but like, yeah, I don't know. So, yeah, we get a fun. We the, the bit where that note was from was from this bit with him and uh, Uncle Chuck, where they're talking about again their um their different machines and the roboticizer and the the digitizer, and it's cool. So we got back to um LD talking to Sally and he's like yeah I, I, I uh you know Nicole she's a she's she's pretty not epic cuz uh she's not my dead daughter and she didn't save my dead yeah, daughter she's not a gamer girl like she <laughs> said um she's a fake so, gamer girl <laughs> oh my god but so um but so Sally's like look you're still basically her father and she needs you like you shouldn't you know take this on her he's like if I was taking it on her, I would have deleted the bitch. It's like more or less what he says. Um, but so, uh, we, but so we find out essentially, so him and, uh, Sally start to go at it and, uh, we find out like, Oh no, we're not actually having an interesting scene. They're being brainwashed by evil. Uh, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, cause we're seeing like a, 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 because he has an actually really interesting line, right? Where he goes, hurting her. Do you actually, does she know what hurting, what hurt is? Do you? And I think that's really interesting because like, obviously you would think, oh, he's, he's doing robot racism where he's like, she doesn't have emotions. She's a robot. And so like, that's what he means. But then he goes to you as in like, you don't understand what it means to lose a child. Like you don't understand what hurt you like. That's hurt. You don't know hurt. But yeah, then no, well, that's just and, and then she's like, Well, I lost my dad or whatever. It's like, yeah, and you got him back. Yeah, and it's and like they're they're like he's crying, she's like pissed off, and that's like nope. <laughs> nope. Yeah, and she's like, haha, lol. It was actually magic. Yep, because we can't have nice things. Um but so they run back inside and they start to be besieged by Gaia creatures when uh Phage makes itself known to uh, to them and uh sally's like if we so we find out phage was made by robotnik i don't know if it's it's not clear again when i thought it was going to be um nikki i thought it was going to be 
Robotnik found her in the digital realm and like put her back together, so to speak. And so she's kind of looking dead. To it. Nope. <laughs> um, but so she's like the phage is like, I got Nicole and Sally's like, if I give you and Sally's like, well, if we give you the red rings, will you let her go? Which I think is a, you know, that's cool. Uh, again, it shows that, I mean, it's, we get scenes like this all the time. We've gotten scenes like this throughout the arc of like, no, we'll give you the big important plot device. If you, if it means saving our friend, um, but it's a nice scene and you know, so Nicole breaks free and she starts to run away and we get a, a flashback. But, well, first Sally tells tales and big, like, Hey, go get the emeralds from the Lake of Rings. Uh, Cause there's a chaos emerald there or something. And so then we get a flashback of when Nicole first gained a body. And uh, Nicole's like, Oh, well I wanted to go look at the stars um, the way you guys do. And so, in my note, I said, um, Sally and Nicole go to have a romantic stargazing session, but like platonically. <laughs> well, it's just a reference. It's a reference to um, the original comic where this is I, what happened. Yeah, I, 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 I remember. I remember that. But yeah, like I would argue this is like the one the mm. one bit where you could argue like, oh, yeah, this is like this is kind of gay. Like because like. She takes her hand to go and have like a then go look at the stars and like it's it's cute like again, and then we don't see it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I again I like, I feel like I was promised a lot more gay subtext than I actually got in the story, but again, I think Sally's and Sally and Nicole's relationship for what it is and what it's actually written as is done well, and I think this scene is very cute. Um, yeah, I agree. And so Nicole is running, and we we see um. So we find out that the Sonic universe uses the same file extensions as our universe does. Um, and she comes across these pictures of um, Elodie and Nikki. And what I thought this was, was I thought that this was Phage's memories. Or like this was something Phage had collected because she because it's Nikki. But nope. And I think so what this moment is meant to be and the reason this moment is meant to be significant is because Nicole does not yet know that she was based on Nikki. But yeah. um, Sally is the only one who knows that at this point. And so that's meant to be the big important revelation. The problem is we as the audience already know this. And so yeah. the, the revelation doesn't hold the same weight. Um, so it's like, again, it, and, and and there isn't enough time to breathe with it, really. Like if, if there was a moment where like Nicole sees this and she's like, oh, wait, this is me. And you have like a moment of like silence. But no, she literally goes, who? And then the fucking Phage smashes through the wall yeah um but yeah so uh sally decides to to go in after her uh her robot girlfriend so uh she goes in and tries to help nicole fight off phage and that's where we end part three indeed <sighs> okay it's going into sonic universe issue 74 part four or four spark of life um uh sally is fighting off uh uh, Phage and Phage has a line where uh, they go I'll tear you down to the last bit of coding and the note I had was you won't even be a for loop when I'm done with you <laughs> uh, for my uh, my fellow computer science majors you'll get that joke um, uh, so they're fighting and they run away and my next note is again big is great because uh, he fishes for the chaos emerald um and they get it. And we get another moment. We cut back. We get another moment between um Sally and Nicole. And it's a nice it's and it's a nice moment. She's like, look, you know, I got you. We're gonna we're gonna figure this out. We're gonna we're gonna fight and it's gonna be cool. Um and so they go and their their plan is to trap it's unclear. They go to trap Phage somewhere. Um it's like they say okay. We'll just the lines. If we can't fight you, we'll just have to kick you out. But so it's still in the digital realm. Like the area they're in is clearly in the digital realm. So it's not like if this specific area with like these computers, it's it's a bit unclear. But so they go to do that, and Nicole isn't strong enough. So uh, Elodie is like, I know, I'll put the thing, I'll put the red star ring on Nicole, and uh, I'll give her uh, some superpowers. And so she does. And uh. Oh, real quick, backpedaling a bit. So we see the ring from Knuckles Chaotix. Um, and it's referred to, specifically referred to as a new invention. But we saw that in the Great Chaos Caper. Yeah. So, 
Where's my no prize, Archie? Um, <laughs> but so, uh, Nicole gets uh, her super form called Overclocked. Nicole, it's very cool. I really like it. Um, and uh, she she beats the bad guy. She seals them away, uh, and it's 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 cool. And Sally's like, "Oh, yeah, you did it." And we get a panel, and I'm not sure what it's meant to be. So Sally goes. She hugs Nicole, and Nicole's like, "Yay!" And then we get a moment of her looking like very serious and she's like looking at her hand. Is it is is this meant to be the realization of her being like, oh, shit, I'm his dead daughter. Like, is that what this panel is supposed to be? Oh, <laughs> uh, I guess I'm I not just, sure. They, they just it's they it's just so out of nowhere. Sally's like, you did it. And they're celebrating. And then she's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um. But so then she Sally goes to talk to El- Elodie and he's like, look, I get it. Nicole's cool and all, but like, I just need I can't like. And uh, so he goes away and Nicole has this long, boring speech about how she's like, look, I was created to save his daughter, but I ended up like her, his daughter. If anything ended up like I ended up taking more from her than I was able to give. And um, the exact line is my potential for growth came at the cost of Nikki's life, which like isn't exactly true. Because, like, the way it seems is, like, she, she like, it, it wasn't like she died and then her, like, spirit or whatever went into Nicole. It was like she, Nicole was reading her shit, she died, and then Nicole was, like, what they managed to get. I don't know. It's just, it's weird. It seems like, like, I get they want Nicole to, like, be angsty about this, but it's like, you, like, you didn't, like, they wanted, they almost are trying to phrase it, like, she had to die for me to be here, which is simply not the case. <laughs> yeah, it feels a bit forced. Yeah. Um, but so uh, LD gives them, he's like, wait, before you go, take a red star ring. You might need it in the future. Um, I don't know when they're going to use it, but I'm sure they will. Um, yeah, they do eventually, I think. Uh, and then they're like, all right, let's get going. And um, the, then... Sally's like, you want to go back in your little 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 handheld prison, Nicole? And she's like, no, I want to feel the wind on my face. And we realize that the tornado, for some reason, has zero passenger seats. And then the story ends. <laughs> yeah, and I, I like that ending. I think it's cute. I think it's fun. Uh, so overall, this story is... um. Ian, what did you think of the story? Yeah, I think... I think a big problem with it is mostly that a lot of its interesting ideas get undercut with like the the kind of um nicole nicolette thing or whatever um uh or nikki thing um and then you know dr led is kind of a boring character big and tails are just kind of here and then sally and nicole are just kind of like uh i really like their dynamic in the flashbacks i think that's really great but then i think in the modern day they're just kind of boring so i don't know it's just a it's just what I, i continuously feel from it is like i didn't feel like the emotional hook was like you kind of said, well defined enough, and two, kind of like the the way we solve it is we just kind of beat some virus creature. It doesn't really tie into any character thing. Doctor LED just kind of gives her the power up, but it doesn't feel like it's like a character moment for him either. So I don't know. It kind of feels like a lot. It feels like a lot of setup for something that just never really gets paid off to any crazy degree. I mean, you didn't even mention that Nicole gets a super form. I did. Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, then that's how bored I was even just hearing about the story. And that's wow. for itself. Ian, geez, you're 50% of the show. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't paying attention. <laughs> when you were recapping, I wasn't. <sighs> Ian. So, I didn't care about this arc. That's my, re- that's my reading out of Ted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, um i thought Look, man i was hanging out with jack sparrow we were teaming up with donald to beat up this pirate monster yeah. it was a whole thing I'm, I'm sure but so uh my thoughts on the arc um it's good it's 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 unlike my old idw reviews when i would say it was good while i was dying inside i actually do think this is good i think it has a lot of value i think there is something here i think it's just again it doesn't I think, well, the problem is I read this right after Champions, and Champions is a hard act to follow. And also, it's a very different book from Champions. Champions is all like, woo, we're having fun and fan service. And this is like a, a, just a man being sad about his dead daughter and being haunted by the robot ghost of them. 
Um, again, I think there is a lot of it that doesn't quite hit the mark. Again, I I was promised gay subtext, and this did not deliver. Um, but I think a lot of it works really well, and I think I. I, I wasn't like, well, that was a waste of time. Like that, like, like, no, I, I like this story. I thought it was, it was good for what it was doing, but I think it could have, again, I think some, some other, some little stuff, again, having Phage, uh, you know, be more significant, uh, maybe doing more with the, the development of the characters. I think that could have gone a long way. Yeah, I agree. Um, but so, yeah, I think we've, uh, we've talked about all we can about this arc. So, uh, before we go, Ian, you want to plug your channel one last time? Yeah, so I'm on uh, Ian Waffles on YouTube and Twitter. You can follow me there. Well, thank you guys very much for watching Sonic Comic Chaos. Yep. And what are we what are we discussing next time? Oh, when when we return, we're gonna be taking a bit of a break from uh, this from Archie Sonic from pre from Reboot Sonic, and we are going to be discussing the post Zombot era. Of uh, IDW Sonic, everything from Shadow Races and Badnik bases to issue 50, including imposter syndrome, including bad guys. Yep. It's definitely going to be a time. It's go, you know, you hit the nail on the head, Ian. It's going to be a time. So, you know, for those of you who've maybe missed the IDW reviews I used to do, uh, maybe those will, you know, yeah, you scratch that itch. But until then, I want to die. Take care, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.